Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to start with lesson number 7 from class 11th English Hornbill book and the name of the lesson is The Adventure by Jayant Narlikar. Introduction. The chapter The Adventure is a story about Professor Gangadhar Pant Gayatonde who is strangely in a different world. He knows it is Pune, but the facts are different from what he believes. He decided to go to Bombay via train Jijmata Express. When he reached Bombay, things were different. When he decides to investigate the history, he finds some surprising facts. The East India Company was still ruling and the Battle of Panipat had been won by Marathas. It was different from what he knew and had studied. The East India Company was taken aback after events of 1857 and the Battle of Panipat had been won by Mughals. Now, moving on towards the summary of this lesson. Professor Gaitonde was travelling from Pune to Bombay via the Dijmata Express, a train which was faster than the Deccan Queen. As he was crossing towns and villages, he met a man named Khan Sahib who talked about his business and chatted about several things. They got off at Victoria Terminus Station, which was neat and clean. It had British officers, Parsis and Anglo-Indian staff all around. He was confused as to how the East India Company was ruling the country as according to his facts, they had fled away after the events of 1857. He went to the Hornby Road and noticed that the shops were different. He entered the Forbes building and inquired about Mr. Vinay Gaitonde, but as checked by the receptionist, no such man had ever worked there. He went to the town hall and sat in the reading room. He took five books related to the history and decided to go through them one by one and check how the facts had changed. He started investigating from the period of Ahsoka to the third battle of Panipat. According to the fifth volume, Bhausavenshi Bakhar, he found out that Marathas had won the Battle of Panipat and spread their influence all over India after that. He was confused as it was different from what he knew so far. After the victory, India was moved to the path of democracy. There were no longer any kings ruling and democratic parties had been set up. The professor started liking India as he kept reading further about it. It was different from the one he believed he saw. This country knew how to stand on its feet and it was no longer slave under the white man. As he was going through the book, the librarian told him to finish since they were closing the library. It was 8 o'clock. He asked about carrying the books with him as he would return the next morning and slipped the Bakar book into his left pocket. He checked into a guest house and had his dinner. He decided to walk towards Azad Maidan. He noticed a large crowd of people going towards a pandal. A lecture was going on but he noticed something unusual. The presidential chair was empty. The speaker was talking and the crowd was continuously moving inside and outside. He could not control himself and moved towards the stage and sat on the chair. The crowd was taken aback and started asking him to get away and move away. He tried to talk to them but they started throwing several objects at him such as tomatoes, eggs, etc. Soon the crowd moved towards him to push him away and he was nowhere to be seen. Next, he woke up in a hospital bed and saw Rajendra in front of him. 
He narrated the whole sequence of events that took place and Rajendra listened to him amazed. The professor was confused as to where he was and if he had been in a coma for the past two days. What was the experience he just had? Was it real or not? Rajendra explained to him that it happened because of two theories. Catastrophe theory and lack of determinism in quantum theory. Catastrophe theory states that a small change in any situation can result in a shift in behavior. In reality, the Marathas lost their leader, Bau Sahib and Vishwa Rao, and hence they lost the battle. But Professor saw that the bullet missed and Vishwa Rao was not dead. Professor then showed him the torn page of the Bakar book that he had in his pocket. Rajendra read it carefully and told him that realities can be different for different people. What he thought had happened is a catastrophic experience. Rajendra told him that in the case of electrons, one cannot predict which path the electron takes at a point of time. He told him that it is a lack of determinism in quantum theory and explained to him what it meant. In one world, the electron may be found here and in another, it may be found in another place but in the third world. It may be at different locations. Once the observer knows about the correct placing of the electrons in every world, it might happen that an alternative world exists at the same time. Hence, the professor was in two different worlds at this present time. He had real-life experience in an alternative reality and he came back from another world. Both the worlds had different histories and different sets of events. The professor wanted to know why he was the one to make the transition. Rajendra told him that at the time of the collision with the truck, the professor was thinking about the catastrophe theory and its role in the war. He was also thinking about the battle of Panipat at that moment. So, the neurons in his brain acted as a trigger and made the transition. The professor was in that alternative world for the last two days. Now, moving on towards the two most important questions from this lesson. Question number one, that is, assuming that in this world there existed someone called Rajendra Deshpande, why does Professor Gaitonde feel so? And the answer to this question is, Professor Gaitonde had gone through a strange and a harrowing experience. He had been literally transported into an alternative universe. In the alternative world, the reality was very different. History had altered its course. Now back into the real world, Professor Gaitonde, as a historian, felt he would go to a big library and browse through history books and would return to Pune and have a long walk talk with Rajendra Deshpande to help him understand what had happened. After the queer happening, he was unsure about the reality and wondered if Rajendra Deshpande existed. Question 2. What were the things that Professor Gaitonde noticed as the train entered the British Raj territory? And the answer to this question is, As the train touched Sarhad from where the British Raj began, an Anglo-Indian in uniform went through the train checking permits. The blue carriages of the train carried the letters JBMR on the side, an acronym for Greater Bombay Metropolitan Railway. There was a tiny Union Jack painted on each carriage as a reminder that they were in British territory. As the train stopped at its destination, Victoria Terminus, the station looked remarkably neat and clean. The staff was mostly made up of Anglo-Indians and Parsis, along with a handful of British officers. So that was all for today. Hope you like it and we'll meet you in the next video.